Welcome to Channel One, it's Brad Supercoach Pro. Today we're taking a look at the round 22 AFL Supercoach team preview. Our total score, we've just pipped Steve by one point, so we're just ahead of him in the rankings. By about, weirdly enough, like 20 something spots, but only one point separates us. Um, so, yeah, funny, sneaky goal achieved so far, but three weeks ago, he'll probably turn me over in the last last round. That'd just be how Supercoach rolls, but. Um, I feel like the side's sort of standing pretty halted in that, you know, between eight and 11,000 now just because everyone's got very similar team. And um, and it almost comes down to the VC and C every week, like the Bont decision over Flanders, et cetera. Like that can really make a difference. I think it's underrated how much people don't realise how much a, a captaincy choice can actually make, um, especially over the course of the year. So, uh, we've got some things right, like bringing in Cherry, bringing in Meek, um, going Cherry over Gorn's been good over the last, well, I don't know, a couple months now. Um, flicking Butters and Sarong in round two was brilliant, like bringing them in really early on and recognising that they'd be up there. Um, but then some other calls, not starting on us, risks in my side, not starting with like Yo's, McGovern's, and then... On the flip side to that, not holding Martin and Young. Um, so uh, it's been a bit of a mixed year. My trade-ins have been pretty good, I want to say. Rookies have been good. Like I've, I haven't missed Massimo. I didn't miss Zach Williams. I didn't miss Combin either. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just like that 50-50 call. Like maybe once a month that I sort of stuffed up on that decided me from not going to that top 1% I feel this year. But look, enough of that. Marty Hall's been named back in. Purely, I'd say, just to replace Stephen May. Um, I can't imagine he'd be the sub in this one. Um, I'd be actually generally shocked if he was. Um, So here's my emergency, of course, which is handy. But the real factor is... um. I've um, heard, heard niggly stuff again. I think this was actually on the AFL website about Bont. So I'm still going to leave the C on him regardless because every time we hear something about Bont, he still performs really well. So he's the captain on their side. I, I doubt he's going to be a laid out in my opinion. But other than that, I'm pretty certain I'm going to VC Tristan Cherry. Um, he's up against Bailey Williams. The West Coast concede ruck points quite heavily. And I'm just going to back my gut on this. Like, I just need a nice odd VC and cherries the way. Um, even with that Bont news, I'm still looking at captaining Bont. If something really bad does happen, it's going to be Captain Gorn um, from here. But I don't even have to look at the Cs, in all honesty, with how confident I am with Chish and Cherry. Um, I think I'll still play around play around with the R three position next year as well, and have that DPP swing to sort of make cash gen off R three. I think it's very underrated, but yeah, he's just so consistent, especially the last two weeks. Like it's pretty wild scoring one fifty one, one forty four, one thirty one against West Coast last time. So for me, he's a no brainer. I don't even care about the C at this point. <clears throat> Surely it'd be gone. Like he's just punch out a 130 he looks back to normal i'd say after that he went at 177 against port adelaide at the start of the year and i missed that so i might actually just do that to be honest like cherry into gorn frazier hopefully he's not a mood uh sorry hopefully he's not the sub i have a bad feeling he could be sub or not even named completely 5 p.m at the team sheets for the sunday games always are confirmed on a friday at 5 p.m so so what a bit, how you going? Joe Richards, oh, is there any point looping this man with Jackson and uh, Kurt? No, probably not. I'm expecting about a 56-point game from Richards tonight. Um, and who knows if he's sub. Like, that'd be frustrating. It'd be the most super coach thing ever for him to be a sub. And then, yeah, Dowling dropped huge. So I'm really hoping Mana stays in that cat side for the next three weeks or... I don't know what the hell is happening with Fisher. Hopefully he's playing VFL that can do something because Stevenson's been out, named out of the side. So Fisher's got to come good. Um, I'm actually super worried about how my side's going to finish off the last two weeks at least. Like if this is how it is this week, that's fine. I've dodged another bullet. But two weeks ago, I could cop a couple of bon- uh, bonuts, donuts, um, 
if something happens in my forward line, we've got zero cover. Because um, I've been bevoed as well by this whole Frazier being rested or dropped. Um, it hasn't been in the side for a little while. So, Dowling, we need you to do something in the uh, Sandfall on the weekend. So you're named the following week because you're going to get smashed by the doggies this weekend and sort of hope for one or two week one or two week injuries um, to some Adelaide midfielders potentially so Dowling can grab his spot back because that's 40, 44 is awful. So anyway, stumbling on my words this morning. So I'm going to keep the video short and and straight to the point. BC Cherry into Gorn this week um, with the potential of going into Bont. Um, but like I said, Cherry should seal the deal. That's the preview. I'll catch you on the next week. I'll probably do a live stream this week. I'm probably going to do one Sunday night. Um, whether it be with someone or if it's solo, either or. Um, and I might even jump on a sneaky live tonight and see how I feel by the end of my shift. So hopefully you enjoy this one. Give us a like if you haven't already. Um, thanks for watching again. Thanks for supporting us. We've only got three more weeks to go. And then uh, 2025 is here for Supercoach. So cheers all. Thank you.